Hello and happy February. My name is Ms. Tai and welcome to Virginia Beach Public Library's Black History Month program on demand. This recording will be accessed all month long and along with to-go kits with craft materials that are available at Central Library while supplies last. The items in the kit are easily swapped out for more household friendly items in the event that you are unable to procure a to-go kit. So feel free to substitute as needed. Along with the items in the kit, you will also need some glue, scissors, and writing utensils. So we're going to be doing a lot of crafting and learning, so we want to make sure we have enough blood flow to our brains. So we are going to do some stretching affirmations. Affirmations are things that we say that we think are true. We're going to make all of ours positive. You ready? We're going to take our arms and reach up high and say, today is a new day. Today is a new day. Then we're going to reach out wide. See, I am awesome. I am awesome. We're going to hug ourselves and say, I am loved. I am loved. We're going to reach down low and say, I can learn and grow. I can learn and grow. And last but not least, show me your thumbs. We're going to point to ourselves and say, I can change the world. I can change the world. Awesome. Now you can keep stretching if you want, or you can have a seat because we're about to do some learning. So we are in the month of February, and the United States of America celebrates Black History Month in February. Did you know that Canada and the United Kingdom also celebrate Black History Month? Canada does so in February just like us, while the United Kingdom does so in the whole month of October. History.com defines Black History Month as an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in the U.S. history. It's also known as African American Heritage Month, and is often used to highlight achievements of the Black people in America and their additions throughout history. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Black people and African Americans in the United States because it is important to look back at the choices and mistakes of the past and make sure we work on it for the future, and to see how the past still acts upon current life. It's not always the most comfortable thing to address, but our history is an important part of how and why we live the way we do today. Throughout history, especially in America, black people were not often or always treated fairly. It began when they were taken from Africa and enslaved or trapped against their will and forced to work under terrible, unfair, and inhumane conditions for more than 200 years. They were thought of and treated more like animals than actual people just because they looked different, which was something they had no control over. These slaves were primarily kept by the southern states as northern states had outlawed slavery by 1804. And other than their opinions on slavery, the differences between the North and the South grew. See, the North had a lot of industries and factories. They loved large cities. They wanted high taxes from their people to support building and expansion. And they wanted a national government, so just one part of the government, over all of the states to make the rules. The South wanted things differently. The South had a lot of countrysides, farms, and plantations. They had small cities, low taxes for the because um, they didn't want to expand. And they wanted states to make the rules instead of a national government. Both sides wanted such different things that a war broke out, the Civil War. And as a result, in April of 1861. In this war, the South separated from the North into its own country. Abraham Lincoln, the president at that time, realized that there needed to be a change, and a good way to defeat the South would be to turn their numbers, specifically the slaves, against the South. He officially stated that slavery was illegal, and that all current slaves were now free. It is important to note that he didn't free the slaves because it was the right thing to do, but he freed them because he knew that this was the way to win the war and reunify the North and the South. The war ended in April 1865, and even though the president abolished slavery in the southern states in January 1863, it took almost two and a half years for the final slaves to be told that they were free people on June 19, 1865, also known as Juneteenth. Now, this was a big change for a lot of people of many races. People they used to enslave and also people they used to work for were now at their level. Everybody was supposed to be treated the same and with the same fairness. But change is hard and not everybody wanted to change. This started with segregation, where black people were told that they had rights, 
but just not as much as their white counterparts. There were separate rules and separate buses, schools, bathrooms, restaurants, neighborhoods, and even water fountains for black and white people. And those who broke those rules often paid for it with their lives. In some ways, the roots of slavery still prevented black people from thriving in their new freedom. But there were also many people of all races who decided that that was wrong and fought for equality. A large amount of the people we will be talking about lived during slavery and segregation and made an impact on where we are today. Many were doctors, speakers, teachers, inventors, activists, and pioneers, or people who were the first to do things in their fields that no black people had done before. And they set us up for a more successful future. Now, let's learn about some famous and notable people in black history. You should have a five by four bingo card. And there are extra chips in your bag in case you lose some. And you will be given hints for the people on your board. You can guess the right answer before I reveal it and we'll match them to your card as we pull. Don't worry, we're playing together. We'll play two rounds. The first round is double bingo, where we get two lines in a row. And the second time will be blackout bingo, or when our whole card is full. We are not clearing our boards between double bingo and blackout bingo, so just leave everything on your board until we are completely through. You ready? The first one. This doctor was the first black American to earn a medical degree. He was denied an education in America because of his race. So he got his degree in Scotland and returned to the U.S. to open the first Black-owned pharmacy, and he treated both Black and white patients, men and women alike. The answer is James McCoon Smith. This woman escaped slavery and led many slaves to their freedom using secret paths and a network of allies known as the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman. This Harvard Law graduate was the first African-American president, and he ran for two terms. Barack Obama. This professional heavyweight boxer, nicknamed The Greatest, is regarded as one of the most significant sports figures of the 20th century. Muhammad Ali. This woman, often remembered as the first black woman billionaire, was a media star having her own show network, and a very notable book club, Oprah Winfrey. While often known as the peanut man since he created over 300 products with them, this scientist is best known for his research into alternative crops to cotton, such as peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes. George Washington Carver. This was the first African-American woman in space. May Jemison. This inventor is noted for patenting the three position traffic signal and a respiratory device that acted as a blueprint for World War I gas masks. Garrett Morgan. Now remember, we're playing double bingo, so we might be close. This pair of professional Olympic winning athletes with a total of 30 Grand Slam titles between them are sisters whose names are well known in tennis. Venus and Serena Williams. This speaker had a dream, including one where his children would one day live in a nation where they would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King Jr. This African-American actor had a huge impact on the culture in the 50s and was mainly the only African-American film star. Many people of different colors saw him as a hero. Sydney Poitier. Bingo! Well, double bingo, so now we should have double bingo. But don't clear your board. We're gonna play blackout bingo, try to get all of the places. You ready to continue? This queen of soul was the first woman inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and sings about a lot, including respect. Aretha Franklin. After escaping slavery, this abolitionist and orator fought to end slavery, and he also advocated for women's rights and taught himself and others how to read and write. 
Frederick Douglass. This aviator and aerial acrobat was the first African-American woman to get her international pilot's license and said that the air is the only place free from prejudice. She also refused to fly in shows that required black and white people to enter through separate gates. Bessie Coleman. This entrepreneur created a line of homemade hair care products for black women, and this self-made woman became the first black millionaire in America. Madam C.J. Walker. This Princeton and Harvard graduate was an advocate for health and education while serving as the First Lady of the United States. Michelle Obama. This woman is credited as the mother of civil rights movement and is remembered for refusing to give up her seat on a bus and her arrest started the Montgomery bus boycott. Rosa Parks. This singer, songwriter, and pianist wasn't discouraged by the fact that he went blind at an early age and went forward to support the civil rights movement in his 50 year career. He even refused to play at segregated events. Ray Charles. This woman is the first African American, Asian, and woman vice president. Kamala Harris. This man was not only a civil rights lawyer, but the first African American Supreme Court justice and was nominated by the then current president, Lyndon B. Johnson, for the position. Thoroughgood Marshall. Blackout bingo, we got them all. Good job. Now, one notable person who is often spoken about in black history is Martin Luther King Jr. He was a key speaker in fighting for equal rights and freedom. And he spoke about his dream that all people were equal and that he hoped that one day people of different races and skin tones would be united as one. Go ahead and reach into your kit and grab your bell craft. Together we will make a freedom bell because like a bell, freedom also rings. And your bag should be a cup with a hole in the top, multicolored circles, a bell and a pipe cleaner. Also make sure you brought some glue and a writing utensil. So first, if your pipe cleaner is not already strung to your bell, go ahead and string that. And then what we're going to do is around the bottom rim, we're gonna write, let freedom ring. I'm gonna use my Sharpie and do that. Let free. Dumb ring. And you might have room to do it twice. If not, don't worry about it. So now that I've wrote that, I am going to take some glue and I'm going to glue these different skin tone shades onto the cup. Gonna make sure to space them out. Gonna put one on the front and on each side. You might have to press it down to make sure it stays along with the curve of the cup. It's okay if it takes a little extra glue, you know, extra time. We have plenty of it, I promise. Here's my third one. And last but not least, my fourth one. You might have to press it down to make sure it stays. But with your writing utensil, you can also draw faces on these because these are just gonna be different people. They can be people you know, they can be people you want to know. And you can also give people hair. That's always cool. Or glasses, I wear glasses. So I think that's a good idea. And let's see, I'll give this guy some big hair and some glasses. 
And you can draw it however you want to draw it. And this guy is going to have some nice spiky hair. And once you're done with that, you're going to put your bell through the hole in the top. If you need some help, you can always ask your adult and be careful because um, pipe cleaners are a little pokey. But once you get it through the top, I almost got it. There we go. You can pull up on it. And then that is your freedom bell. Awesome. And it's okay if they're coming off a little bit, we can use more glue, we have plenty of that. So here is a quick and easy song that we can sing together using our freedom bells. Chose this song because it has a very familiar tune you might have heard of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or the ABCs or Baba Black Sheep, the same tune. And you can sing it along with me. And inside of your bag too, you should also have the lyrics. Freedom, freedom, let it ring. Let it ring, says Dr. King. Let us live in harmony. Peace and love for you and me. Freedom, freedom, let it ring. Let it ring, says Dr. King. Good job. You know, I really like this bell. There is another game we can play with it. I love this game and maybe you've heard of it before. It's called Red Light, Green Light. Go ahead and stand up. When I hold up the green light, you can play your bell as much as you want. But when I hold up the red light, you have to stop. If you get caught or make a mistake, you can sit down. You can still play the game if you're out, so don't worry about that. You ready? Green light. Red light. Did I get you? Green light. Red light. Hmm. Green light. Red light. Red light. Did I get you then? <laughs> Green light. Good job. Did you have fun? Did you know that red light, green light mimics a traffic light? Okay, yes, you might have guessed that. But did you know that the traffic light signal we see today was created by a member of the black community? You might remember from Bingo, but Garrett Morgan was a man who was born to two formerly enslaved parents, and he was a handyman who owned his own shop. With the money he made, he not only was able to publish his own newspaper, but buy and own a car, which most black Americans were unable to do. After witnessing a horrendous crash from the traffic lights of that time that only had stop and go as an option, he made the traffic light we know and use today with a yellow warning slow down feature in the middle to increase safety. This meant that stops no longer needed to be watched by police and he got a patent for his invention in 1923. Now, we're gonna make our own traffic light in your kit should be a black rectangle and three different colored cupcake liners. And the colors should look familiar. Grab some glue and make your own traffic signal. I have mine right here and I have my glue ready. You can take your cupcake liner, you can flatten it out to make that really nice circle, however you wanna do it. And you can start with whatever color you want. I'm going to start with green. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But I think the green goes on the bottom in the traffic lights we see. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom of my black rectangle. I'm gonna lay it flat. You might need a little extra glue for those, those edges. And that one's my green. So in the middle, I'm going to do my yellow, my warning light. And you can put the glue on the cupcake liner or the paper, whatever way works for you. And if you need help, remember that you can always ask your adult. And last but not least, I'm gonna do my red. Put it right on top. There we go. And you have your own three signal stoplight. Now, look at the stoplight and think about where in our lives we can stop, be cautious, or go to support freedoms and dreams. When we see hate or racism, we should stop. We should refuse to be a part of it. Uh, when we see situations that we don't understand, hear language that makes us feel differently, we can be cautious, take time to evaluate the situation or ask for clarity if we need it. And for green, we can go when we make friends who are different than ourselves, when we advocate for those without a voice and when we dream big. And speaking about dreaming big, you might remember that we talked earlier about Martin Luther King Jr. and his dreams. He has a lot of dreams, and they often were about equality and a better world for the future. Here are some quotes from his speech and throughout his life. Martin Luther King Jr. says, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? but a consciousness asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. He also says, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. He also says, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. And I'm gonna read part of his very famous I have a dream speech. <coughs> I have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. The last thing in your kit should be some papers of different colors and a cloud. We're gonna do our very last craft and it is an I have a dream rainbow. So on the front of them, there's different dreams that are written on it but you can also turn it to the back where it's blank and you can write whatever dreams you want for this. You can come up with whatever dreams you would like and you have to know that you are the future and you can make your dreams come true and you can make the world a better place. If you wanna share your dreams when you're finished, you can always share that or send a picture to our social media pages. And when you're done, it might look something like this or it can look like whatever you want it to look like and make sure you put your name on it. 
If you want to look in the more Black History Month content, check out our library market offerings for programs at our branches, our displays at our locations, and of course, books. Here are a few books that I recommend. Vashti Harrison writes quite a few youth nonfiction books, and in them are very nice illustrations and bios about very influential African Americans. There is one for African American women. There's, often, there's also one for African American men. And there are countless books on display at all of our libraries during this month. This is marking the end of our program. I want to thank you for taking the time to learn and engage with me. And I have some parting words and quotes for you. One thing you should know is that we are all a part of the future and what we do now will be part of our history. Be the beacon of change you want to see for a better future. If you see something, say something. And some quotes from more notable African-Americans. The time is always right to do what is right. Martin Luther King Jr. History has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. Michelle Obama. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King Jr. In complete darkness, we are all the same. It is only our knowledge and wisdom that separates us. Don't let your eyes deceive you. Janet Jackson. I hope you had fun, I hope you learned, and have a happy Black History Month.